Tonight's roast, Mr. Seth McTeague. obviously watched the movie like a hundred times and I've um, been to some festivals and last night we did the open night in New York with family and friends but seeing it tonight with all the people who worked on it is like the best experience so it's like we made a movie together and put your damn hands together that we made a movie Uh, per your request, I mean, we're going to run through this, and um, you wanted to recognize a lot of people who, who will ask if they feel to, to come up and, and say a few words as well. Yeah, but I'll start with you, my man. It is uh, wonderful it must be to see this movie play. I know you just came from New York, so I hope you're, I hope you're feeling good, man. I hope you're awake. <laughs> you're yeah, I'm tired, but I'm good. <laughs> He's tired, buddy. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you something that stood out to me watching your film. It has been mentioned a few times. When I first heard of your movie a few days ago, earlier this week, uh, something that was really set on to me initially from the advertising and from some of the first reviews was the crypto angle. There is this kidnapping that happens, it's a whole intertwined plot, but there's also this crypto angle. And watching your movie, it is more surprising to me, there is the crypto angle that is very prevalent here. It's more modern in that take. But there is so much more underlying with that theme. There is underlying themes of, of fatherhood, of brotherhood, of you know, bonding with one another, of morality, of, of personal passions and balancing all those out. Can you explain to me what it feels like just seeing what you want these, this audience and the audience at large who's seeing this movie on, on opening weekend to take away from all of those intertwining themes and the concepts that your movie presents? Yeah, um, so I think just naturally, like I, I always come up with these concepts that kind of sound ridiculous. And like even, even honestly based off the trailer, a general person might think like, oh, that's just like gonna be like this thriller about a kidnapping, surprise birthday party, whatever. But I, I want people to take away that like there's actually relationships between the characters and how um, siblings can be affected differently by parenting and how one kid could have a great relationship with their father and the other one could have a horrible relationship and how um, family isn't always blood like you know the Chad and the Justin character have a better um, connection than, than him and his own brother and, and, and Brennan, um, sorry and Todd and uh, Shannon have a you know a better connection than than he has with his own brother, so yeah. I mean, honestly, it's uh, the relationships. Uh, those are my favorite moments. Like when when Robert's watching the, the the home video and then it cuts to William and he's sad and you see him as an adult. I think that one shot, that one cut, lets you know everything about him. And I think those are like my favorite moments. Yeah, that's excellent. Man. Do I understand correct that the editor is here tonight as well? He, yeah, I mean, he doesn't tend to like to come up with it. It's fine. We'll just shout him out. Me. We'll shout him out at the very least. It is uh, your brother, right? Yeah. Yeah. So a big round of applause. I mean, I could. I mean, he's willing to come up. He want to come up. It's all good. Just he's the opposite. He wants to stay behind. To recognize all of exactly what you're saying, it stands out to me a lot. The the intimate moments flash, you know, cut between with the high stakes, the the real the car chase moments. It's it's quite a lovely job. So it's it's good all around, man. It works successfully. Uh, you wanted to call up a handful of people tonight. We'll start, of course, with uh, one of the main producers, Mr. Julian Borga. Come on, he Julian. Is here. Yeah. Take it steady, we'll take it one at a time. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks for, so much for coming, man. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be quick and you can, you can choose to stay up here after this or you can just head back out. It's good. <laughs> I will get stay up, that's, fine. Yeah, that's <laughs> But it's wonderful to have you here, man. I want to ask, um, because I haven't found it, a clear definition online, I assume this was shot during the pandemic. Uh, uh, just before, actually. Just before yeah, the just pandemic. Before. Like, Got it. Yeah, we wrapped like, I mean, we discussed about it with Reiner. We wrapped like, three or five days before like, the official announcement of the pandemic. Gotcha. Yeah. So I guess, how has that trip been for you on your personal angle, both with production and with distribution and everything that you've had to arrange with this movie in the years since coming into the pandemic and then realizing this product you had that may or may not have been in a finished state at the moment and then trying to get it to fruition and eventually into you know, the lineup into the, the on-demand circuit like you have right now? Yeah, we had to change everything last minute, basically. <laughs> it was just a nightmare. Um, everything was planned, and of course, like everything, like fell apart, and we have to change everything and anything. 
So it was very challenging uh, for all of us, for us too. Yeah. It was very challenging, um, and we went through it, and and I think we are still friends. So yeah. that's good. <laughs> Has your trust been warranted in this first time big writer, feature director, producer, actor, everything, the man above? You're solid. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, I mean, like, the, the big pandemic, like, just happened like that, and everything stopped. Everything shut down. So, in terms of budget, in terms of, like, workflow, in terms of everything, it was just a nightmare, you know, yeah. for real. I mean, we, should, we shot the movie in 2020, okay? Yeah. We are 2022 now. Yeah. means, like, this movie was supposed to be released, like, six months after the shoot. Yeah. So, we had to hold all that during the pandemic. So, it was, it was very complicated and challenging. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, look at that now. It's so good to see it come to fruition with everyone here, and it's, it's going on demand in a couple days, I understand. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, we'll bring up a host of, a, of just a select few of the cast members who are here tonight. Uh, Mr. Brennan Keel Cook, please tell us. You can say it. It's a, <laughs> uh, Sam Sung Lee, who plays uh, <laughs> I saw floating in the back, Grace Serrano, please. Yo, yo, yo. Hey. <laughs> Try to put yourself on, guys. I'll leave the chair out. If you'd like to sit. Please. <laughs> Last standing, I see you Brennan, I'll, yeah. I'll start with you, my man. Um, I, I have to ask on the record, and don't let the crowd bias you, is Kobe the goat? Oh, Kobe's, well... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> debatable, debatable. Come, but I, I come from LA? Or is I'm sorry? Come from LA? You like the Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm an LA fan. My dad's in the audience. He introduced me to the Lakers since I was a kid. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm from uh, Orange County. Gotcha. Yeah. Lovely, yeah. So, Nixon. Yeah. So, I don't know. <laughs> not, not a big cheer from the crowd on that one. Um, <laughs> my man, I, I, I will be honest here. I'll say my graces. I, I think you are my personal most compelling role in this film. And I think that is because you work so well as a comedic foil. The first time you appear on screen, I think it got me one of the biggest laughs in this audience, just laughing yourself out. And then you hold it together through, you know, the more dramatic moments, man, and then trying to, you know, keep that pace and keeping the in-jokes and keeping the little lines on the script that people are laughing with. Are there, and, and you are free to get specific with me, are there moments on set that you really felt that that was your role, the, the, to hold the comedic level, to know that the audience has to take, you know, a little bit of the, of the seriousness off of their shoulders and be able to laugh and be able to compel themselves with these characters and whatnot. Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Um, <laughs> Seth gave me a lot of freedom, uh, much to his chagrin. <laughs> um, it's funny though, when, it, when we first did the audition, I never did the audition right, according to Seth. He was like, man, you did something in your tape that was like the thing and you haven't done it since. I was like, he still hasn't. I still haven't. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, we'll, we'll find it along the way, hopefully. But now he gave he gave me a lot of freedom with with what I could do, and um, I mean, it, most of it was on the page. I mean, he wrote a really fun character to play, and you know, when you when you take the leash off me, I can have a lot of fun, and I can kind of run around and do my thing. But hopefully, still fit in the you know as a cog in the machine of the whole story and everything. Hopefully, it won't stick out too much. You know, yeah, just enough. Just, just enough. enough. That's just brilliant. Enough. Uh, we'll give it to Sam. Hey, so good to talk to you, my man. You are holding so much together in this movie, and I think it's really interesting. There is a, a very obvious evolution that your character goes through that I'm sure you have to balance. You come up with maybe the most evolution and the most resolution within himself or herself of any character in this film. Um, but you really break into a lot of those scenes with a fluid timidness, with a fluid engagement and an emotional attachment in act one, I think, when you're looking at the, you know, the video footage of your father and whatnot. I, it, there's a lot going on with that character and a lot to balance out, I'm very sure. And how do you feel that you break into those intimate moments knowing that the, the script really revolves around that evolution and that kind of resolution that you need to portray at the end of the, at the, end of the movie when everything kind of, you know, goes your way and sort of... I just think sad thoughts and it just gets me there. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> There's so many shots of you look seeing sad thoughts, I can tell. It's, it's actually so funny because when we filmed that scene... I pushed you, you, bro. you <laughs> He was just like, keep laughing, keep laughing. Yeah, 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 just, it, it, you're, you're enjoying it, it's funnier, it's really funny. And, and it was like so funny to me when, my, when I was filming it because I was trying to be so sad and I'm like up there like, <laughs> like trying to like enjoy the moment, trying to enjoy the flashback and I, I had a lot of fun. Um, but I'm glad it, it came across that, that it looked like uh, I was sad. Uh, that's good, that's good. I'm doing my job. That's I also job. told him to be sad. 
Yeah. I'm sure getting yes. shoved in a trunk is very easy, you know, precedence for being saying exactly. that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, no, I mean, I just try to, uh, yeah, I think it's just like thinking about, um, I don't know, part of it is also that I, I, I actually didn't grow up really with like a fatherhood figure, so I think that actually was quite easy for me to tap into to feel like I was missing something, and so I, I thought that that kind of actually came pretty naturally. Uh, yeah, that's kind of really dark. Yeah. <laughs> but it's beautiful. <laughs> it's only like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Like, it <laughs> that's good. Congratulations, of course. Uh, Grace? I'll pass the We're not going to back up. Uh, Grace, it's lovely to talk to you. I have to ask you the obvious question. I mean, I saw it when we were walking in. You're your newborn child. Uh, congratulations, how old are they? Uh, she's six months old. That's oh. fresh. <laughs> so this movie inspired me to have my own child. Yeah. So I have to ask you, it, it seems uh, precipice with the schedule and everything, to, to film this movie and then to reflect on your character, seeing her on screen with that angle, with that childhood angle, or you know, having a son that she is not connected to, that she desperately wants to be connected to, and that fueling all the motivation for her character. How do you see that now, today, with your new motherhood and, and the angle that you relate to and you reflect off of with seeing it on screen? Well, that's a really sweet question. Yeah. I, it's, it's, it's been an interesting journey as a mother because as an actor, you know, you play mothers and you can imagine what that love is like <coughs> and you think, oh, it's gotta be really deep, but then you do, you know, birth a child and this human being just takes all of your energy and all of your love and it's like you're walking around with a heart on your like on your palm and just mm -hmm. um and so it it's interesting to watch it back because of course she's gonna choose her child over chad <laughs> i mean yeah i love you um, i love you but it's not you know it's you're not my child and so the things we do for love that's what i love about the movie you know the in the in the same way that you were talking about brotherhood and uh and fatherhood then there's also, there's just a human connection, right? And the things we do for those we love and how that can drive us to do the unthinkable. And, uh, and I really enjoyed that about this film. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm so glad that, you know, it's, it's such a modem of reflection, this movie, for everyone involved, it sounds like, really. Uh, the last person we want to, to call up among so many uh, devoted cast and crew is cinematographer Rainer Lipsky. <laughs> Shooting it a few years ago and then enduring the whole pandemic. I mean, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. well, I'm sure in the editing. Thank you. Thank you. I gotta ask. I mean, you balance the tone of this thing so well in the interior and the exterior settings. There's, I, I think the. Crypt oh hi. My daughter. <laughs> hi Mark. Thank you for for joining. I'll come up with a question for her by the end of it. Um, I think I think the obvious reflection, and this may be just jumping at conclusions. I jumped to a lot of Michael Mann's most recent filmography, like Black Hat. And I've seen, you know, Thief and, and Heat are in the news relevantly, mm. um, especially with that crypto angle. It just plays so well off of a movie like Black Hat. Mm. Um, but the way that you incur those low lighting sentiments, hi. <laughs> she really wants to answer a question. Um, I got to ask you a little bit as well, though, about, you know, shooting exterior scenes out in those big wide streets, those, that whole Lambo chase and everything, getting all that arranged and, and, and working with the camera in such a fluid and a, a fast paced way, I'm sure, with stunt choreography and everything. How was it for you and how, how was the experience? You know, it was super fun. I mean, I love making movies, obviously, you know, it's fantastic. And then, but there were, of course, uh, some minor challenges for the whole thing, because obviously this ha doesn't have, like, the biggest budget, the biggest crew, and then you have a director who is, like, in almost every scene or every moment, and so you don't, you want to discuss something, and then you realize, oh, he's not here, you know? He's, like, in front of the camera and so on. So there's, of course, a little, at times, um, a little challenging, and then you point the camera somewhere, and you think, oh, that's an amazing frame, then it's like, oh, no, we are actually supposed to be in New York City right now, there's a palm tree, and that is a shot we can't do, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, there's like a few things, a few challenges surrounding that whole thing, but, you yeah, know, it was uh, fun, we tried, of course, yeah, to make the, the very best with the limitations we have, and then yeah, and, and try to make it, like, look, give it a nice scope, but feel dense at the same time, yeah. right? 
Yeah, and something that's so amazing about the cinematography, and a question for either you or Seth, is the balance when you cut intentionally between the upper class neighborhood and the lower class neighborhood. There's a, there's a vibrancy not only in the way that the characters perform and act, what they're eating, but also just in the lighting setup, in the way that it's bright versus dark, in the way that it's dense versus you know kind of open and, and spacey. And filming those kind of scenes and getting that intention with the edit cut and everything, how was that balance? And it seemed very important to both of you, so how was that balance on set? And knowing that that was the intention behind uh, a lot of the, the yeah, scenes so back and forth. I can start. Yeah, no. Obviously, that was like um, very important to to um, to balance it out, to contrast the thing in the production design, in my lighting, in the setup, how we shot things, and so on, to the the, the lens choices and so on. And then, um, yeah, it was I had then. I mean, we had in post production, like we had like discussions how we were going to handle that, and then shooting it, I had pretty much freedom to, to like how really the shots were designed and this and that. I mean, he had, <laughs> when I interviewed for the job, he said, I want to do, a uh, should look like minority report. And I said, yeah, well, we might have a little <laughs> less money, a little less <laughs> days, and so <laughs> but we make the best of, of it, you know? So, um, yeah, so, yeah. but we, we, we were like, in the yeah, beginning, no they were tweaking on the, like, on, <laughs> on the script and so on, like, during production and this and that, and then we, I think, yeah, we, we collaborated really well, I think, on this one. What, what do you think? I think Reiner was amazing, like, he was like a gift from God for me, seriously, like, when I, when I first started making short films, first person I always casted was the cinematographer, and then I scheduled around their availability, always, and obviously, I didn't schedule around his availability. He was available, luckily, but he was so amazing. Like, like, you know, things get stressful when you're doing so many different hats on a film and it's your first feature. And like, Reiner's just so positive. Like, I would like, man, so honestly, so appreciative to have him. So lucky. And with those scenes, like, I think the main thing for me is like, um, we got a location for like the 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 um, the Chad and Todd's house that was a little nicer than what I wanted. So I guess like. Like, there's like nice salt and pepper shakers in the background that we were trying to hide and stuff like that. It was just like trying to make sure that their environment looked a lot lower class than the Chang brothers, which are, you know, which is kind of easy to do because they were in a mansion. So yeah, yeah but <laughs> Reiner was amazing. Yeah, that breakfast yeah. spread, man, it's beautiful. How are they? <laughs> no, it's so good to hear from you guys. Maybe maybe we'll do an independent. Maybe we'll do a double feature with Minority Report and see, hey! see which one stands up. Hey! The audience can vote. You don't want to make my movie look really bad. All right. <laughs> Uh, we have a few minutes left, and after this, we'll, we'll recognize some casting crew to come up and take a photo if, we, if you guys would like. But does anyone in the audience, uh, if you have a question, uh, just feel free to raise your hand. We can totally reach out and do oh, a question or two for, for some of the audience members uh, while we come up. Reiner. This man's standing. <laughs> Reiner. Yes. I'm older than you. I do not like this modern world, but tonight in this theater, you guys delivered a beautiful piece of cinematic art. It's touching, wonderful. All of you did a bang up job, and I just can't believe that this thing was the cool. It's not a major cinema release, or, and it should really seriously deserve an Academy Award. God bless you all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man, dude. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. I know that yeah, some of us who are getting into it, we do the trying to film industry in this room, and night shoots are very challenging, and I can't help but wonder how many night shoots you have, and how many days this film was shot in. Yeah, the question's about the shooting schedule, night shoots uh, versus day shoots, and, and what, how many days for the shot? 20. 20. We wish 25. No, 20. No, it was 20. We wanted, like, I think, I think we would have needed, like, 25 to 30, but we shot it at 20. And so we didn't need it then. We got it. <laughs> but yes! that was, like, really, like, the, the, the goal is, like, um, for, for uh, a production like this, it's like you, you have, like, the constraints or the factors, and within those, you have to try to make the very best movie possible, right? And so we had to rush sometimes, and of course some scenes are a little sketched out, I would say, yeah. at times. Yeah. But it was 20 days, and normal. It's, it's like short for the ambition. I mean, it's a very ambitious first feature. And uh, congratulations. He's saying we overworked him, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm super happy. Like, I'm yeah. Yeah. It's okay, it's okay. So, we, we overworked him. It's okay. Yeah. It was good. It was super fun. You saw a virus coming, and you just you hit those buttons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, that's <laughs> 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 How many night shoots? Oh, uh, 
I, I don't know. I don't know. There was a yeah, decent amount, like, and, and so trust me, it's yeah. harder least, to get people in good spirits in the middle yeah. of the night, especially when you got like 20 extras wearing cakes on the roof. That was a hard night. <laughs> yeah, like half, maybe half. Yeah, about a week and a half. Go for it. Yeah, so uh, for the director or cinematographer, what were some of like the most, uh, or what would you say the most challenging scene for each of you to uh, go into, uh, just in terms of just general, what, what would you guys say the most challenging scene for you guys was? Oh, so I, the last day of filming was the argument on uh, with, with Todd, and I was like, man, I was like so... You know, I, I think for, from actors' perspective, there's always that day or two in, in the movie that you're like dreading. But um, so he, without telling me, he decided to like kind of stay, not necessarily stay in character, but like annoy me during the shoot. So like, I really didn't like Brennan much during the film. I love him now. We're actually like really good friends. I didn't like him much. Like he revealed to me after like, oh bro, I was just staying in character. Like, you need to warn me, I also have to direct. So anyway, so I, I really didn't like him much, and this is day 20 of 20. So we're, and, and we are frustrated, we're shooting, like this is way over time this day. And so we do his angle first. I'm like, all right, cool, I'm gonna let, I'm, I'm gonna let him go. And I, I definitely didn't, I'm, I'll be honest, this is not good to say, but I didn't give it my all when I was off camera. He gave it all his all when he was off camera, but I wanted to save my energy, because I was about to explode. And man, when they came back on my side, and I, man, I just let it rip on them. I was just screaming at him full force. I just let it all out. So it was difficult, but it was cathartic. Uh, I don't really have like the most challenging. It was all kind of challenging, yeah, at times <laughs> with the, the, what it was. And, uh, but but no, I, I really like it. As I said, that we, we always try to make the very best of what we had because, of course, there was not big repainting of rooms or like big crazy redressings or something. We basically work with what we got and try to make the best of it and make it feel that it tis wasn't like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, but of course it was like the rooftop scene with a lot of people and um, um, at night exterior, again, we are in downtown Los Angeles and it's supposed to feel like New York City and then the limits you in the lens choices and everything. That was like challenging, yeah. but I didn't have like sleepless nights because of it. But but on a positive note, I think for me, I hope for him too, maybe, getting the wonder that, that's in the beginning of the movie, oh, man, yeah. the whole set exploded. And that's literally what was the vision for the original short film, was that wonder in the beginning. And when we got that, literally the whole set erupted and everyone celebrated because they just knew it was a great shot. Yeah, we were so excited we, when we put that off so. with focus and um, operated it on a, on a gimbal. It was, yeah, we were super psyched. Uh, Everybody yeah. felt Woo! good. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was great. That was lovely. That was yeah. lovely. Yeah. Kept it up for 19 days. It was excellent. Uh, <laughs> probably time for one more. Any, any other questions in the audience? This guy's raising hard over oh, here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're behind the light. That's oh, okay. That's all good. Uh, question for Seth. So in the scene where you were in the restroom burning the note, okay. um, do you, what were you thinking, if you can remember? Or like, the, what was your process in that scene? The question is the thoughts during the scene where you are burning the note. Yeah. So um, I was thinking that like the love of my life is now gone with everything like we like the goal in my mind the characters like this was it he was going to use this money and him and her were going to get away together because her kid couldn't be here that's why he told the crew this this is it i'm out so like when he finds out that she has everything and she's gone with it like he's heartbroken um so yeah for me it's just like thinking about like if i was like you know in love with someone and you know like like, and if they just ditched me, like, it would be heartbreaking. So, you know, the people watching might not have known, like, who the letter was from, so probably, like, well, why is this guy about to cry? But for me, I was just like, damn, like, imagine, like, you know, you know someone really close to you just ditched you and took everything, and, and now you're screwed. Mm -hmm. Good emotional sync. I like it. <laughs> so, I gotta ask, you, you wore so many hats in this movie to make it all come to fruition for your, not to say specifically, but with you know the ambition you have going forward as a filmmaker, is there one particular role that you found that you want to focus on a little bit more? Uh, are, you, are you just gonna go all in, maybe take five, six roles next time? Um, <laughs> act, act three different roles, maybe? We don't well, here's the thing, like, yeah. you know, in, in filmmaking, I think anyone in this business knows you start to just do things out of necessity because, like, people aren't just gonna do it for you. Like, I don't got, like, top Hollywood screenwriters like, hey, shoot my script right now, and here's a $10 million budget. So it's just like, well, I'm, well, I'm gonna just write stuff that I like, and then I'm gonna put the people together. And then, like, of course, I, I 
one like directing and acting. Directing for me, I feel like is the most natural. I just, you know, I don't know. I just feel comfortable doing it. Acting is the most difficult, but it, and challenging, but it's so rewarding. Like the, the, these actors will tell you, it's like you're embodying another human being. It's such a weird, odd experience. Like for me, I like to move and, and like my character. Like and my whole time, I'm trying to be so still. It was like super difficult, but it's rewarding when you feel like you got the performance that you wanted. And hopefully, the audience likes it. But as long as you're happy with your performance, you can live with that. So yeah, I mean, I, I'll probably still do most of them, but. You know, like if Steven Spielberg's like, hey, come on, as just an actor, like, hell yeah, I'll act for Steven Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we guys to do anything. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. You know? We'll get more physical with it. We'll do a minority report. Just have that. you run it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming out to Lumio tonight. I think we wanted to do, you want to do a capture? Yeah, <laughs> like everyone who worked on the film, come, come on up and let's take some pictures. Everyone, yeah. everyone. Yeah, any anyone position, wants to take anything. Just, just for a photo, we'll, we'll do everyone. a photo. Everyone. Come here. Everyone. Or you can stay there, that's fine. <laughs> anyway, if you did anything. We just have a few minutes with us left, everybody. Thank you all so much for coming out to the Lumiere tonight. We're oh, and the after party. party is at the Phoenix. We have to take a five minute drive away, I think. The Phoenix. We're turning up tonight. We're celebrating. Turning up. Turning Ooh. up. She's bringing the baby. The Lumiere is playing wonderful movies all weekend. Man, can I tell about the disguise? Come on up, everyone.